Hi, in this video tutorial we're going to look at how to create scenes and segues in our storyboard. So to begin with I'm going to create a new Xcode project and it's going to be a single view application and I'm going to click next and I'm going to call this storyboard demo and I'm just going to have it set for iPhone. If you do check for Universal, then we will have a separate storyboard for iPad and a separate storyboard for iPhone. So for simplicity purposes, we're just going to work with the iPhone device for now. And you'll want to make sure that Use Storyboards is checked, as well as Automatic Reference Counting. And I'm going to click Next and Save My Project. Now if you take a look at the files that we get when we have a project that uses a storyboard, you'll see that we have a view controller H and a view controller M file, but we don't have a nib file. We don't have an XIV or an interface file in here. When you choose storyboards, it gives us a main storyboard file instead of a nib file. And typically, most applications, you will only need to have one storyboard unless of course you selected for a universal application and then you would have a main storyboard for your iPhone and another main storyboard for an iPad. So in our example we're just going to be working with the main storyboard so I'm going to select it and it's going to open up a window and this looks very similar to the nib file that you may have worked with in the past and it is a view controller file and so initially this is pretty much the same as a nib file, only it's got a few differences. Uh, you can see at the bottom of the screen here we have view controller and if I click down here you can see we have first responder which we hardly ever use uh, and then view controller which we'll be using to connect to other view controllers. Uh, we can see that there is a dock area over here for view controller that has our view in here and you can expand and collapse this as needed. So I'm going to collapse this right now just so that we have more space in here to work with. Now this view controller is our starting view controller and you can see from this arrow over here this illustrates that this is where our application will begin. So this is the first one that's going to be loaded. And also on the utility panel you can see that this is set up with a little check mark that says is initial view controller. So we can also see here that this is our view controller that is going to be loaded in first. Now to navigate also around in your storyboard, there's a button here at the bottom with the minus and the plus sign. And so the minus sign zooms out so that you can see more of the storyboard area because we can add more view controllers or what are called scenes in here. And um, the equal sign usually brings it back up to full screen. And then the plus sign zooms in. So if we zoom out a level, we want to zoom back in, we can use the plus sign. Now we can add elements to our storyboard, our view controller that's in the storyboard. One thing you should note though is if you are zoomed out and you try to drag something in, let me just try to take a button and put it over here, you can see that it, it just uh, zooms right back again. It doesn't let you do any detailed editing zoomed out, so we need to zoom in before we can add something to our interface. So I'm just going to put a button on here and I'm going to put a label on because we're going to create a little app that has a few different screens in it for navigation. So I'm just going to call this, we'll call this home and we'll name our button, let's say go to two. So this is our interface for our home screen. And what we wanted to do is when we tap go to two to load a second scene or a second view controller. So we can add another view controller to our storyboard in your objects manager over here. I'm going to grab a view controller. I'm just going to drag it over here onto the storyboard. And so now we have a second scene or view controller. 
Now you can see if I expand the dock over here, we have view controller scene and then view controller scene. So there's over here, it can be a little hard to kind of distinguish one from the other, other than clicking on something and selecting it and then it will display it to you, the one that is selected in your storyboard in addition to looking at the different elements that are on there. Sometimes they can look real similar. So we can give these unique names so that they'll be a little easier to identify. So if I click this view controller and I change my title, let's say this is my home. So when I press enter you can see that this is view controller home and now this says view controller scene for the second one so I want to change that one so I can click on view controller and let's say this is we're just gonna call this two. so as you start to add multiple view controllers you can give them names so let's add a third one in here and laying these out you know we could have them next to each other I'm gonna call this one three so that we could follow or track the information over here and again, I'm going to collapse this just so that we have more screen space. But you can see the label underneath here, View Controller Home, View Controller 2. Then this one will be View Controller 3. When it's not selected, we can see the name under there. Now, to navigate around in here, again, these can all be lined up over here. It even gives you the alignment tools if you want to have them nice and neat and orderly. You know, we can have them staggered around. All depends on what makes sense to you, uh, but a lot of times this will be starting and then if you have a series that goes from one to the next to the next, then a lot of times you have them lined up next to each other. Okay, so now we have three view controllers. Now if you note that in our files over here, when we started we had a view controller H and M file, which were automatically set up to control this home view controller. But when we added these additional two view controllers, we did not get any class files. So in order to get these to work with any type of coding, we will have to add class files. But we'll do that in a different example. Okay, so if we wanted to connect these to each other so that we can go to two and then go to three, I'm going to change the look of this a little bit so that we can say, Yes, that the link from this button did take us to 2, and then the button from 2 did take us to 3. So I'm going to modify these interfaces a little bit. So I'm just going to zoom in so that I can add some interface elements here. So first I'm going to change the background color. So I'm just going to make one yellow, and I'm going to make another one different color. So we'll do green. So white and yellow and green. And then I'm going to add a button. So we'll say go to three. And then let's say for the last one, we're just going to add a text label that is you made it three. When we were using individual nib files, we would have to go in and set this up to be to do an action and then to load in this view controller into memory. One really great thing about working in storyboards is that we can quickly and easily set up navigation. So what I can do is I'm going to right click and drag from my go to two button into my view controller for my second scene or my second view. And I'm going to choose the push segue. And you can see move this around a little bit, right, that we have a connection now between our home and our second view controller. And let me repeat that from go from the second view controller button, right click and drag to the third view controller, and I'll do push. And now we have a connection there. Let me zoom out here and put these next to each other so that it's a little easier to see the path that these will take. So two will take us, go to two will take us to the second view controller, go to three will take us to the third view controller. 
So let me run that and let's see what that looks like in our simulator. Okay, so I'm on my home screen and I tap go to two and it doesn't work. So the situation here is that the type of segue that is added here, right? these are the push segues, it's associated with a navigation controller and the navigation controller wants to keep track of where you are and how to return. So rather than us coding in, once we're here, how to go back again, we can add in a navigation controller. Let me zoom out here so that you can see what happens when we add a navigation controller. If we go to Editor and Embed In, we can see that we have an option for either navigation controller or tab bar controller. So the navigation controller is going to add a bar at the top and when we get to another screen, give us a back button. Tab bar controller will give us a tab bar at the bottom and allow us to uh, work our navigation through a tab bar. So this example, I'm just going to use the navigation controller. And you can see that it gets added before our main view controller and it adds this little navigation controller area in the top section. Now it also threw off some of the user interface, it just sort of shifted everything down. So let's fix this a little bit, right? And now I'm going to test this out in the simulator. Okay, so now we have go to two, and here's two. We have our back, and then we can go to three, and we still have our navigation built in here to be able to navigate around. So all of this without adding any code. Pretty cool, huh?